Continuing this week's look at Cybertron's all-around law enforcement officer Prowl, and this time we have gone to a much more modern and current figure based on the character. This is the Universe 2 version of Prowl. Now, this one I've actually technically reviewed before as BotCon uh, uh, Rapido. However, uh, not everyone sees every single video I produce, and there's going to be a lot of people who just search for this toy on YouTube, and, well, if, they're, if they just happen to click on this video, welcome to the channel. But also, they're not going to get any references to that review. So I'm going to go into this clean, and we're going to look at this as if I've never talked about the mold before. As you can see, he is a very up-to-date kind of sports car. It's got a little bit of the old Fair Lady Z in there, at least in uh, profile and styling. It's a two-door, etc., but it's much sleeker. It does have a more modern profile, which is all nice and good. Again, mostly done up in white with a lot of black paint and some black parts with a lot of white paint because Prowl's design is a little bit difficult to get all the way through. But they did do a nice job here, and it's pretty much all accounted for. Even that little rise, that little point that goes up his hood. It's a very Japanese... Uh, it's a very Japanese thing for police cars to have, so just a little bit of culture for you. As we can see, uh, not too bad on the deco. It's a little bit lighter. You don't have that blue emblem that we saw all over on the G1 figure, but we do have tail lights that have been painted on as well as a full bumper. You can see molding there for the exhaust pipes. That's all nice. Highway Patrol Police. Highway Patrol Police. I have a feeling I'm going to be saying that again at this point. Let's see, we do have the Autobot sigil up front. It's a bit bright in color for some reason. It's almost to an orange hue. Hmm, weird. And then we have some more uh, up-to-date details, like the headlights up front. I have the grill, turn signals, etc. It's all painted nicely, right down to the light bar in translucent red, with a little bit of silver on top. It's all well and good here. And it does make for a fairly good-looking pursuit vehicle for Proud to take on as a vehicle mode. I do like it. There's nothing really that bad to say. I actually kind of like the smoky effect on the plastic. Gives it this more opaque look, and it's more along the lines of what I'd see, like not being able to see into a cop car and all that. The back section's just painted, but for robot mode, that's probably for the best. This also hides all the inner workings, where you can see a bunch of robot mode junk that really doesn't look like an interior. Because that really doesn't look good. Okay, so what else can we do here? Well, not a whole lot. He does roll. And on Rapido, I remember a clearance issue with the gun that he has stored in vehicle mode. Right here. Um, I don't have that issue with this Prowl. And I don't know if just the parts align better or if I just had Rapido transformed a little bit wrong. But either way... Yeah, there's no real issue here. He rolls just fine since the wheels are pay are pinned on. They do a uh, not too bad job of actually getting him one place to another. Okay, so that's pretty much the vehicle mode. No real uh, gimmicks or anything to show off. So we can go ahead and go into the robot mode, which starts with what is still some pretty strange engineering work, I find. So these side sections have to come off. And rather than just the doors being the wings on the vehicle... Everything, everything, uh, the front fenders as well as the doors are all part of the same piece that all have to shimmy loose from their various pins and pegs. You also have to use the specified cut in the ball joint holding them in place to actually move them into position so the rest of the toy can transform. It is ball joints on translucent sockets. You know how I hate that. Because that's just a time bomb, but this seems to be holding up pretty well over the years. Flipping the legs out. This is very familiar style transformation. Feet folded up like that, and... There we have the legs. Simple as that. Now for the rest, I'm going to... I'm going to get that out of the way as quickly... So we can fold all that up, and that will create the actual wings of the view of the robot mode. Arms come out like so. Right, the arms are going to kind of double hinge out like this, and then 
upwards like so, and then you'd like to save the head reveal for last, but I need that head out of the way so I can actually lower this into position. So I'm going to go ahead and flip that up, and it is spring-loaded in order to flip it up like so. Now I can lower this down. We can get the rest straightened out so he actually looks good in robot mode. I'm going to go ahead and flip his shoulder rockets out, put that up where it belongs, and we straighten out the arms with a little bit of rotation, a little bit of swiveling, and just like that, our Prowl is in his proper robot mode. Get him flat-footed. It would help if I actually remembered to fold the heels out. Little things like that always kind of screw me up in these reviews. Hey, look, there he is. We have a fully functioning Prowl. I'm going to have to adjust this because he's a little bit taller than even I remember. Yeah, we do have our uh, <laughs> some of our favorite Autobot Enforcers. I, I can think of some that are less prick-ish, but this one definitely harkens back to the original. Definitely has a good look to him. Well, a few things might be a little bit strange. We will get to those here in a bit. For starters, let's go along with the head. Definitely Prowl. It is the signature look with the sharp pointed fins on the head as well as the rounded off and, and kind of uh, sharp edged helmet. All looking quite good. The face is done well. There's light piping with a translucent blue. You can still get some color even with no light behind it, which is always good. He's got some weird proportional things that we're going to discuss uh, right about now. So, one of the things that always bug me about this toy, and I think Rapido gets away with it better than Prowl does, is there's a lot of weird, like, shapes and alignments here. Like, for starters, the shoulders are parallel to the top of his chest, which is fine for you and I, but it looks a little bit weird on a Transformer where the shoulders are usually a little bit bulkier and kind of lift up above the chest a little bit. These kind of sink below because of that, uh, because of the shape of the hood. Also, and I think even Rapido had this problem, because of that flip-out gimmick and how the head works, that panel there at the bottom gives him this really tall neck look that's really kind of visually distracting. Uh, Rapido got away with it a little bit better because his head shape made it look a little bit bigger. On Prowl, it's a little bit more noticeable, and it's kind of a distraction when you expect his head to be no, like a centimeter lower than it actually is. Yeah, it's ultimately a minor detail, but once you notice it, it's really kind of distracting. So we do see he does have a very classic G1 stance. The hood is the chest, the rear of the legs are the car. And it's all prowl stuff, so of course all of that is maintained really well. And you do have the door wings here that now hold up a bunch more kibble. So I, I guess that's just so the rest of the vehicle can be a little bit more cleaned up and the chest can be a little bit more robot-like once it's actually transformed, and I can kind of go with that. For new details, we do have a little bit more paint on the pelvis section, reds and silvers, as well as some molded details along the thighs and up into the arms. One thing, one thing about this toy and this mold in particular is Universe 2, um, it's meant to be and thought to be a continuation of classics, but detailing like this where they got really heavy into the detail lines and molding in order to create like a lot more detail into the toy's actual physical form. Uh, harken more to the movie lines than they do classics, where everything was kept a little bit more smooth, a little bit more G1 in stylings. So he comes across as a little bit more overly detailed, like especially those extra lines in his face, that kind of thing. Things that kind of harken back to the where you can kind of tell that the designers were still used to the movie aesthetic and didn't really quite get back to what they were doing for classics. He does fit in in general, but just styling-wise, I think he's a little bit more involved than some of the other toys that he's meant to stand with. Now, the articulation of the guy, not terrible at all. The head does swivel left and right. No ball joint, but hey... You do what you do. Uh, the shoulders are pretty good. You have a hinge there in the torso so you can raise the shoulder up for action poses and whatnot. And because of a couple of swivels, you do have universal motion in that shoulder, which also comes with a bicep swivel, a elbow that goes beyond 90, as well as a wrist swivel. Plenty of motion in the arms. Love that. You have a waist rotation. 
I miss these. I want these more often. Thighs work great. Great range in the hips. No thigh rotation in this particular mold, but we do have a rotation just below the knee instead. Uh, knee does bend 90 degree there. And the ankle does rock. So he has plenty of balance that he can obtain. So all around, great level of articulation. Now the transformation does also mean his arms can go forward on his torso. So he also has that, but it's a little bit awkward. And in some positions, it can cause him to look a, a little bit like uh, his arms just kind of floating out there with his long hinges sticking out. But you can pose around that and get some uh, pretty good shots out of him, I feel. He's definitely got a lot of posability. Even for his time, I think he was kind of a step above the rest of the pack. Uh, there's nothing really gimmicky about him. You do have those shoulder cannons that meant to represent the original G1s. They're unpainted, sadly, but uh, at the very least, they are much smaller, so they are less of a visual distraction from his head. We do have his gun, which folds out like so. It's no way based on his G1 gun, but at the very least, it does give him some accessory play. And, you know, what You know what? police officer is uh, incomplete without having some kind of firearm along with him? Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to the toy. There's no big gimmick or anything. Universe 2 was more about just getting the character right and getting in a ton of detail in a very, uh, very classic package. And sometimes that went a little awry, and sometimes it went about as well as it could. I think Prowl is an example of going about as well as it could, at least for the time. So that, my friends, is Universe 2 Prowl. He is a good update of the original character with plenty of articulation to keep you entertained. Definitely a huge step up from the G1 or previous releases that the character had. There is some strangeness with the proportions. In particular, I, that head kind of floating above is a little bit strange. But if you can look beyond that, I really don't find a whole lot of fault to this toy. Except, I will warn you, uh, a lot of releases of this figure on any of the paint that's painted on translucent parts, uh, it got really weird, like sticky and could like even smear off. It was pretty nasty. Now mine has maintained pretty well over the years and I might have been one of the lucky ones, but for some reason, a lot of these had some really iffy paint. And I believe, I believe even the Silver Streak repaint had the same thing. So buyer beware, getting one where the paint isn't going to do anything weird on you is a little bit of a dice roll.